Hi, welcome to this week's episode hosted by Gray and Mark Lofts in Dunn's Health and Fitness and Mark Elm of Leeds Beckett University, where we take training theory and science onto the gym floor. Hey up everybody and welcome back to the Yorkshire Fitness Podcast. Um, I feel like I rush into that, you know, really quickly. It just kind of flows now, but I feel like I just go blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so welcome back. We will crack on. Um, we're on now on episode 15. Is that 15. right? Yeah. Episode 15. 15, flying through. So uh, really quickly, before we start this one, we said we'd just have a little reflection on last week, didn't we? Yeah. Um, yep. On our last week, but obviously it was completely different for us, wasn't it? You know, like kind of thing that we'd initially started and got talking about so threw us a little bit out of his comfort zones, I think you could safely say, from it, boys, if you were uh, um, Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, things that got discussed. Uh, yeah. I think it, it was good having a guest, though, wasn't it? A different voice yeah. and, uh, and a different, what, what would you say, a different perspective on things, you know, coming from the other side. We're trying, you know, we're, we're all right with everything, out we, as a role, we, we think that we are, but, you know, from a, a woman's point of view, from a medical point of view, um, different parts of it, but we've just been saying on how it, it, uh, what's the word? It backs up the things that we've gone back. It, we, it went back on. We referred back to a good few other podcasts, didn't we? You know, like it referred back to habits. It referred back to exercise and sleep and the whole thing. So yeah, it was it was good. I thought. Yeah, it was nice to have a proper doctor. I wanted for a change. Yeah, yeah. Instead of you. Before we before we go on, can I? I'll tell you what I keep forgetting to mention as well. I keep meaning to do this when we interview. Uh, is say thanks to Big H Henry for doing our little um, introduction. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like the, so when you any of you guys that are listening on here, if you hear the, the Yorkshire Fitness podcast and that little thing, that's um, that's Big Henry. So thanks to him. He's a guy who trains here. Uh, he's a musician, so he knocked us that little uh, introduction up. So cheers, mate, and uh, we'll have to get him on as a guest one day. Yeah, he's got some stories. He was telling us some funny stories yesterday. We're into this guest thing now, so yeah, going back to anyway, yeah. going back to Nikki. Uh, so it was really good, wasn't it? We've had loads of good feedback this side, Elm. Have you? We know, like, kind of just don't know how you'd not, not as in, oh wow, I never knew that. Um, you know what I mean? But things because obviously there is loads on it at the minute in there with the old Davina thing and stuff, but I think just the fact that we were on here just chatting about it and putting different perspectives on, I think the, the more that people chat about it, the more it is out there, and the more people feel comfortable about talking about it, which obviously need, it needs to be happening, doesn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, like I say, we, we would never have that conversation if we we're just us three talking, we, we wouldn't have heard that, seen that, even broached it in conversation. So yeah, just that, that kind of whole awareness thing. So, again, as, I suppose if other people listen to it and, and think that was really good, just, just sharing it on, on social media so somebody else might think, oh, I'll give that a listen and, and, and get some, some really good advice in a, in a place where they're not getting any, or I don't know where to get advice. So, yeah, that, if, if those people listen to this, share that out as many times as possible. It might just help somebody out who's having a real tough time. Because I think with stuff we've talked about in the past has just been all about positive things in about going getting fitter, getting healthier, where that, that could really help somebody who's in a real real dark place for what we've been hearing. Um so it, yeah if, if that, that message gets to somebody and they goes, oh yeah, that would really help X or X or Y, then yeah. Facebook, social media, Twitter, Instagram, share it and then somebody else might benefit from it as well. Yeah, definitely, mate, definitely. So we so that uh, that's all good from that. But then we're also going to just have a quick uh, on what we've been doing this week. So what have you been up to, mate? Squatting. <laughs> You're back squatting. <laughs> ah, yeah, squatting. Did you see my picture on? Uh, I think I think it was uh, it's Instagram last week. Full depth squatting. Well, grass. I, I saw it, mate. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Hip all better now. Not yet, not perfect. It's just what well, I'm, I'm just trying to work out what I can and can't get away with and, and, and just getting a lot more rehab done. Like I say, is getting to 40s, it's the rehab it finishes and it's time to cool down. Um, so, uh, yeah. yeah, but getting better, getting there, getting there. So, squatting a bit now, not putting a lot of weight on it, just, just making sure I can I can do the full full load and um, not walk away in pain. Yeah, and hopefully, then, then touch wood. Uh, next few weeks, I had to put a bit more tin on the bar, but yeah, it's getting better. I, I had a bit of a jog two nights ago. I did two k. It was painful. It was horrible, but I did it, and I, my hip didn't fall off. So two k, two k. I don't need train legs that day, so 
right. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to say it must have taken you longer to tie your shoelaces, on it? <laughs> it takes me a long time to tie my shoelaces. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're quite far away but, these days. <laughs> um, let's just so but before we before we go on, let's do, we, we were just talking about as you told story about we, we had this greatest kind of um, not feedback, greatest comment really that we heard from the funniest, the, comment. funniest comment from a parent of so we won't name names, somebody who will train the, a, a, a listener. Um, who said they had to turn it off because we, they couldn't understand what we were saying because we're too northern. <laughs> so like, can, you be, can you be too northern? <laughs> so, not in my eyes, so, not in my eyes. Yorkshire <laughs> fitness part, it kind of, it, it was quite a good idea, on it? So we're yeah, imagine to people down south, it must be like listening to Kez. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it's not, we're not that bad. We should have sure. put us black caps on for it, shouldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> we're not pit, we're not in this dark pit. Yeah, cool. So that's good, mate. You're back squatting. Um, we haven't done much different really this week. We're just still on our journey towards our, our big 24 hour event, which has kind of inspired this podcast. Uh, and it is only in four week, four week tomorrow, actually. So we're getting really close to that. So we're just continuing with our sort of training towards that. We've been doing, we're sticking to a strength sort of training just to give us that good base. And then we're just trying to up as aerobic. Work we do a little bit as well. Probably not doing anywhere near as much as what we should, but we know we're kind of because we did as we did as good four hour block. We did a four hour aerobic session. Was it last Saturday or Saturday before? No, it's at least a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and felt really positive after that one. That was really, that went really good. Clients, members coming in and help like doing this. They were doing thirty minute slots and kind of the the buzz that we got off them, and it just helped kick it on. So. I think there's only so much preparation that we can do um, before we actually just go for the 24 hours. It's yeah, going to be I'm, like food, everything. I'm trying to get my head around how somebody can feel positive after doing aerobic training for four hours. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what, Matt, right? We, I mean, when we did it, we said we'd, um, we'd, we needed them, you know, people coming in. So members are coming in. I mean, we're going to have to open it up maybe to a few non-members and all yeah, that. We're gonna to get, come in. Yeah, we're going to get 30 minutes, you know, to come in with that 30 minutes, but... When, when other people come in, it makes a massive difference, mate. You know, like, it just lifts you a little bit. You know, one person leaves, another one comes in, and it's just, it's that, it just, I don't know. We did a session yesterday, and we're doing it in shorter blocks and doing it, and it felt longer and yeah, harder we're, than we're, doing it for full, you know, than for a we four-hour session. Yeah, we were doing 15-minute rotations yesterday, and it, it was harder than doing 30-minute rotations. 15 um, minutes felt long, man. Yeah, so... But we'll find it. It's, it's going to be all about getting people in. So we will be opening it up. We're filling up quite nicely with members, but we're going to have to open it up as well. I think get some non-members in and get some rugby lads in. We'll probably put it out there. We'll get a couple of wakey boys in. And anybody else who's listening to this, if you're up for a bit of a challenge and you want to come and get involved, get in touch and we'll, uh, we'll start some out, Elm. So that, yeah, for 2K, I'm not sure I'll make a bit of a dent in it, but we'll, uh, we'll give it a go. Uh, Hayley will come with me, and, and she'll, she's better running than I, so she'll probably get... Yeah, you can do some interval, can't you? Yeah, I'll, I might be able to get There's a rower and ski as well, though, isn't there? Rower, ski, bike, you've been on there. If I can do 2K in each, I might, I might be okay. <laughs> That'll take me four hours. <laughs> so that's a good, good kind of segue into what is the challenge, and I think for... But the theme what we're going to talk about today is like why this challenge and why this cause really. Do you want to go? Yeah, all right then. Uh, well, I'll start off with why this challenge then. Eh? So this challenge, I suppose. So Will, for whatever reason, who uh, who does a bit here for us, he, he, uh, footballer Will. Yeah, he, he mentioned uh, the twenty-four hour. Yeah, he mentioned it as well. We had to ah. do like a twenty-four hour challenge or something like that. And so we, we talked about loads of different. Um, loads of different options that we could do like what do we do then do we just keep going just train for 24 hours do we just go from one thing to another to another and they're like but without a target without a, without a, a reason it's like what keeps you going on it you know like so we we came up with it I, don't, I think it was my idea actually this wasn't it it could have been my idea about that I says why don't we get a distance that we're going to cover in the 20 you know look at some and then we looked at it and as it, it happened we looked at John O'Groats and Land's End, how much it was. It's like 1,400 and odd K. So we worked out like what that would need to be done every 30 minutes because we thought, we started thinking, well, 30 minute sections on each piece of kit would be enough because we're going to do it on treadmill. Uh, so it's a non motorized treadmill, what bike, ski erg, and rower. So we thought 30 minutes on each one. 
uh, rotating it, thought 30 minutes were about right. How much distance would I have to cover in total of four machines, then getting members in. So that's how we came up with the plan. So um, it's that one as as reason. It was just probably rubbish talk to start with, wasn't it? Just from Will, because he does talk some crap. Oh, God, yeah, um, so we, I will. But, it's, but it snowballed, and before you know it, you've got a good idea. You know what I mean? It needed our input, I think, to, to, to turn his, uh, his idea into good. But so having a distance in his head, I think that gives you. That gives you a target, doesn't it? So, um, so that's where we went for there. And, and then, then we we every year we always do things for yes. the hospice. Yeah. Um, obviously, we, we every year we do a different chat. We always enter ten k runs, and we generally do an external charity event as well. Whether it's we also do three and four hour like boot camps and stuff, didn't we? And yeah, like right. that, we're always charity. So uh, it just seemed the obvious choice because it's been a shit two year on it where you know like for charities as well as everybody else businesses in class and yeah. uh, when we were closed we were shit for everybody. Um, but charities have had a, they've had they've got some catching up to do, haven't they? Um, and with it being a local hospice, we says it, us ourselves and pretty much everybody who comes here has had some contact, or I'm pretty sure we will have some contact with Wakefield Hospice at some point in his lives. So we said as good as as good a cause as anybody, let's do Wakey Hospice. So we're doing it for them. So we're trying to raise as much money as we can. Um, so that were it. So that's what, and then we says, wow, we're like at, when it's sunk in a little bit that we're doing twenty four hours. We thought oh, we better uh, change his training a little bit here because we're not exactly uh, we're not enduring it. We haven't done it because we're endurance athletes. We're not like his mate Billy um, who does ultra marathons and goes run it. He runs hundred mile ultra marathons, doesn't he? So he's quite used to the twenty four hour ish mark of running. So I've never would to us. I think all three of us can safely say we've never run. More than half a marathon, have we? I don't no. think. You know, have you well? I know. Collectively, if I added up all the ones <laughs> I've ever done, <laughs> yeah, you'd maybe be about there in your lifetime. Yeah, if I if I can add it up all the kind of walking around and doing between squats, possibly, but not yeah. not not running. No, no. But you, you had a spate of doing triathlons, though, didn't you? You you had, you had a bit of a dig at triathlons. You you were yeah. triathletes for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we did too. <laughs> <laughs> But we, re- but th- yeah, we did. Yeah. Uh, we got really into that. We got, yeah, we got all geared up. We got bikes and everything. It were really, it were good. But it worked. You know, what we found were really difficult. This is why we didn't. This is probably why we didn't continue with the triathlons. And any, and I think that it's the same with the endurance athlete, with the endurance events as well. You need time, don't you? If time isn't a luxury that you've got, if you haven't got two or three hours to go training, if you were, if you've got busy life and you work quite long hours and you've got kids who are then rushing taking your kit all over you do not have three or four hours constantly to put to one side to go train to go swim to go bike to go on an extra long run to train for it so it's kind of a cop out you could say it's a cop out but i don't think it is because if you if you listen to us pod sleep podcast you know how, how important eight hours sleep as as kind of seven to nine hours sleep. You, there's no way if you try and juggle that into your lifestyle when you have got kids and when you're working quite long hours, you cannot do it. It's impossible. We, we were getting up at five in the morning to go training to get us two hour sessions in what we before we went to work. So and it would just it would just killing you. It was just too hard. That's funny. When when you said what the hardest part was, I was expecting you to say running, biking, and swimming. No. No, no, that wasn't the hardest part. Definitely not. It was the it was the cramming it in. Once you get into it, it's all right. Is that because it's like oh, you build, don't you? You've you a, a funny story about our, our endurance running friend Billy and his and his, mar- and his uh, triathlon, haven't we? We've got a very uh, funny story about. We've got, we've got a couple to the about, about his yeah. swim. About this is this is a person that runs stupid long distances, like unbelievably far. Tell us what happened when he got in the water. <laughs> so, so yeah so build that picture about it. he's by far the most aerobic yeah. fit kid of, out of us in it hands down he can run marathon it does marathon it does normal marathon for fun now it's just his weekend stroll it's like we do 5k he'll, do, he'll just pop out and do a marathon um, so yeah we got into water and he had a bit of a panic attack so we saw the island this is in Lake Windermere you, you start at your boys you see that it was swim to the island fellas round the island and back to where he started from and out and Billy we, we just kind of lost him at some at one point we didn't know whether we'd overtaken him or he'd overtaken us we got back out and he was just stood all fully clothed and just he'd just given up so he'd had a, he'd had a bit of a panic attack this ended up on his back sculling 
because <laughs> they couldn't breathe and the canoeists like the safety wardens had to drag him onto his canoe and take him in. <laughs> so that was it. End of his triathlon in like five minutes. Was that within walking distance of the shore? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, look. But, but the good thing was, from our point of view, we were staying over that night. Um, so we were staying around Windermere, so plan were there and have a few beers and, and do whatever. And so it obviously, when there's how many of us did it that year? We're 10, 12, 12 that, yeah, yeah, about 10, so 12, it give, it Obviously, it gave us plenty to talk about all day. We, we, let that, we kept that going all day and all night. Was the swim the very first leg of it as well? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. on that event, even I could have beaten him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, you'd, if you'd have stayed afloat, you'd have yeah. gone in. <laughs> I've got my 50 meter badge, I reckon I could have been okay. <laughs> yeah, so but this cool. but I suppose this goes to a little bit of making making sure that you're uh, that you prepare for these things, doesn't it? I mean, he thought well, Bill will call in somewhere the most prepared, he'd done a triathlon two weeks before, he'd done Aaron right, triathlon yeah. two weeks yeah. before, open water sea swim, and then he still had a panic attack on day. So we can um, you have got to be make sure when you're taking on these things that you that you are prepared, and that's otherwise you can come unstuck. And and if like ours, if we do end up going live with it on thing, we don't want to come up unstuck uh, live on Instagram, do we? So <laughs> we don't want to have a panic attack and have to be dragged on, uh, dragged you, back. You do know that Billy will be watching it just in case it happens, just so he can get his own back. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure he'll go without his sleep that night just to watch that. So yeah, yeah. so yeah, so the preparation side of it. Um, but then, but there's obviously now they're, they're massively popular, aren't they? We talked about it before. The, like um, we both read. I, I don't know if you've read that. Have you read any of Ross Edge's books? No, no, um, not yet. No. Uh, well, they are they're worth the read. Um, and these the challenges he's done. You know, like I mean, he did a triathlon, dragging a tree, a triathlon, a triathlon, and he did a a rope climb equivalent of Everest. Mount Everest and stuff, and and then is is obviously his, his massive one when he swam British Isles. So, you know, like for that, you can never fully prepare. You can't do a practice run of that, can you? Um, there's certain things that we take on these challenges, and and you've said it before. You take it on because you've got a bit of motivation. Because number one, you've said you're going to do it, and number two, you're doing it for a you're doing it for a good cause, aren't you? Or you're hopefully trying to raise some money or some awareness for a good cause. I was reading a book and I forget, I was trying to find out last night what the book I was reading in and I can't find it, but having a higher purpose, something which is beyond you and your own goals. It's having that kind of, I suppose it's sometimes it's not just about doing it for charity, but the charity that means something to you and yeah, you, you've got some kind of emotional connection to that. And if you can make a real kind of impact on, on that charity and, and obviously the lives that charity supports, then, then it gives you when you're having those dark times, you're kind of 18 hours in and you're, See you, Joe. There's gone. Nothing that shocked it to Um Yeah, yeah no, you're spot on. You're bang on there, mate. Yeah. Yeah, 18 hours in, your kind of legs are emptied. It, it, it be, it's beyond the physical, then, isn't it? It's not about how, because like, no, everybody's going to be tired at that point. It's why why don't you just stop? Why don't you give up? Why? And it's it's beyond you. It's the, I'm doing it for somebody else and they're, they're great and good. And, and that's, that's the kind of, when you, when you, I think a lot of people make the mistake when the charity events are just, I'm going to do the event and then I'll pick the charity yeah. way of getting into it. And I think like the marathons are a bit like that, aren't they? If you want to do a marathon, you have to pick a charity. And then the charity got so many places so then you then go, oh, well, I'll run for that one. Yeah. Rather than going, I want to, I want to go do something for this charity. What, what's what your kind of guys are doing? You know, you want to do something for the hospice. So like, what can we do for the hospice? That's going to be, um, Attract interest because that's basically another thing as well. Like everybody runs marathons, so it's going to be something different. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely going to be something yeah. different. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Like, like I say, it's good. It's good for it to have. Maybe if we would just, you just don't know. If we would just say we'd do a twenty-four hour challenge just for a twenty-four hour challenge, it might get close to time, and something might come up and might just go, you know what, we can't do it this weekend. Right, so if, when you've committed to do it and you know that people have started, people have already started, started donating to us just giving page, it's like, this is happening. It's, there's no going back and like you say, it's, it, it kind of keeps it, it's, it's on your mind because you know that you're doing it for 
the great. You're doing it for something else. You're doing it to help somebody else, aren't you? Yeah. And and everybody knows, like I said, anybody listening to this who is local or localish will. There's not many people around here Wake that haven't had some form of dealings or contact with the Wakefield Hospice, especially as you start getting a bit older, as we are. You know what I mean? Like us. So you realise what a great cause it is um, and how important it is to this area. It, it's it's unbelievable. So. They need all help we can get. So the more we can push this event and raise money for them, the better it's going to be. Absolutely, yeah. So the, the other kind of thing as well, as we, we talked a lot about in, in previous episodes about kind of getting started and keeping started and keeping going on. And and it's kind of, it's a bit of a two birds with one stone, isn't it? Because if I agree to do something for charity, that involves me doing something absolutely insane physically, running for... 24 hours or covering whatever distance we have, we're not going to talk about the, the training side of it today but in terms of like accruing the number of hours and doing the number of sessions and starting and, and get your diet and your nutrition right and just just to be able to cope with what's coming around the corner it has some personal benefit to you then as well and you, you know if, you, if you're gonna run it with other people you, you can bring them with you as well so that, that higher purpose actually benefits you in the short term because you're gonna to have to go and do some training to to cope with that yeah. And, and yeah, I think you've just hit nail ahead there. Not just us, pretty much every member who's got anything to do with this gym. All of a sudden, there we're, we're involved in everybody. Obviously, we're in it for the long run. We're doing the full 24 hours, but nearly every member who comes in and trains here will be coming in over that 24 hour period at some point and helping us. So it creates more of a team atmosphere, doesn't it? You know, like, because that's what we've always pushed anyway. We've always made that like kind of our number one priority when we started this job years ago, it, it's kind of that, t- it's togetherness and getting people working together. People love kind of being part of a tribe, don't they? You know, and it's yeah, been going on thousands yeah. of years, so yeah. it, 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 it helps, it benefits loads of people. Yeah, a friend of ours did that, was it the David Goggins, four, was it four miles, or four, four miles, wasn't it? Four miles every four hours for 48 hours. Yeah. And you guys went to run yeah. that with him. Um, for, for I think that was his dad, wasn't it? Because he had his... Um, yeah, dementia, wasn't it? Yeah, and again, that's something that was coming ever more common, but it's something that was, that was personal to him, but personal to lots of people because it's so prevalent these days. But loads of people kind of signed up to me, even like the dead of the night, those silly early morning hour runs. Loads of people said, right, we'll run it with you. We're not going to run every every leg with you, but there's somebody there with you for every leg. And and it's those kind of support issues that help. help. But like I say, somebody might have done a four, like a, a four mile run at three o'clock in the morning that would never have done that before. Just because they're going to support somebody else that was trying to go through that that experience. You just you just make the other people feel like they've done their bit. I mean, when it, we're on about spurry with that one out, but we had a member do it and grade it. I, he kept it quite quiet. I didn't even know we we're doing it, but you went and ran a leg early morning. But I just said to Spurry, like when I found out he were doing that, I just sent him a message. I said, if you've got any free slots, just put me in whatever time. As it was, I got quite lucky. I got like ten in the morning on a Sunday. Do you know, like it, it was. <laughs> It was, I got quite easy ride out of it. That was the only free slot he had. Yeah, you picked, you picked him at 9 a.m. in the morning, though, didn't you? That's why. Yeah, but... <laughs> no. But, but doesn't that prove how good people are for that? That Because people were saying, there's no way you're running through at night on your own, mate. You know, like... Yeah. So the, the hard ones were already 10. You know, there were, it was just a couple of easy ones that were left. And that's... Um, and I think that's just people showing the support of it. And, and that's worth more than donating money sometimes, isn't it? just that extra bit and it's it brings that little bit of something together and yeah it's um yeah i think they're brilliant. and that's hopefully what we've got with this because people come in and you can't believe with ours all crap times they're the ones that are going mm. all middle at night jobs two o'clock in morning one o'clock in morning you know they're ones that have been filling up fastest oh, yeah, that first one just, that's what people are saying they're going, Look, we'll come in then. that we'll come in then and do that so we'll probably end up struggling towards the back end on uh, saturday afternoon that's that's going to be probably our wall, and then uh, that's when you maybe jump in. You say Saturday afternoon's free. I'm pretty sure it will be. Yeah, 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 get get your set you in set. You can afternoon. bring beer and pizza. Yeah. <laughs> whoever comes, and that's why they don't want to come. So whoever comes in Saturday afternoon, we want beer and pizza when we finish. Uh, so I think that's my wheelhouse. That. Yeah. <laughs> So, so, yeah, so it's all good, isn't it? I think we're, it's all looking good. It's promising. Um, and it'll just be a great event. I think it'll just be something that we'll get really get going, get bouncing around, on the, on, especially on the day once it goes live. Um, and we'll be putting some live videos of us out there and people to, can get, you know, just seeing the def- different people coming in constantly. 
a big yeah. cycle, and it will it'll talk about a, a, a bit of a team building event and spurring each other on to continue. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'll it'll be great for it. And hopefully everybody will be able to come back when it's finished. Well, that's it. Fingers um, crossed, yeah. And yeah. we'll have well, I don't know how much what what state we'll be in to to enjoy a beer. I'm sure the first one will go down well, but. You yeah. might just find us in a corner then somewhere. Just, but uh, the nick of the first one will go down beautifully. Yeah. <laughs> then you'll be yeah. asleep in the corner. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be just time. down in corner asleep with a piece of pizza in his face. But we'll, um, yeah. I, weirdly, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. I think, uh, going queen. back to the what well, I am as well. I, I think the, we said the four hour ones made us look forward to it even more because of how the, the buzz that we got from other people. But Ross, this is going back to, you know, like I know you're talking about things on the, the great, you know, like kind of having that motivation to keep going when you're doing it for another cause. Ross Edgley, going back to him, he yeah, talks, yeah. I think he calls it eudaimonia. It's a, I think it was a Rome and it was some of it Rome, was not it? Well, like kind of, don't, you, you know, like we need something to be happy about, you know, like instead of just being happy, um, it's, a, it's, hard, it's a hard one to describe, but you know, like enjoy the, the times that you test yourself are when you at your most... Like when the like happy it's happiness, like right, the thinking. fulfillment. Yeah, that's yeah. what he talks about. Yeah, fulfillment, fulfillment rather than happiness. happiness. Yeah, yeah. He talks about yeah. how good that is for the brain, how good it is for you. So it's like when you go through hell, climb. Do people go do the three peaks or whatever? Climb Everest. It, they might put the bodies through hell to do it, but then when they're at the top of that peak, overlooking at what they've been, what they've just achieved to get there, that is when you have that fulfillment and it's that sense of achievement that feels great so uh, it's kind of a little bit i'm, I'm kind yeah. of yeah that it, you're a little bit like that just after the four hour one it was like wow we've just smashed four hours out and we must have had about 15 maybe 15 people 20 yeah. people maybe over that four hour block came in and they did 30 minutes lots with us and even after that little window of it it was still a great feeling and you did so you had a bit of that feeling and we smashed was... and we smashed a bar of chocolate um yeah. that had been brought in for us as well by justin uh, supply rail, which which went down a tree. Beer, pizza, and chocolate. No, no, we did chocolate because we finished it morning. On yeah, Saturday. we didn't have beer and pizza that no, day. No, we didn't have chocolate that day. We just well, had beer and chocolate after yeah, four yeah. hours. We needed yeah. it after four hours constant work. Didn't we? I'm just thinking the Saturday afternoon session for me. That's all. Oh, 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 yeah. Wait, well, if you want to bring a Snickers in and all, mate. Yeah, bring one in. Yeah. <laughs> that's sound. So yeah, it's an, it'll be here in no time. So we're nearly there. We're just going to keep pushing on. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna link all um, every week. We'll put a link to the Just Giving page uh, in the show notes as well. So if people do wanna um, donate, they can do. I think what you said, the matter about some people do these events and they kind of hide it, don't they? Kind of put it away, going, "I'm just gonna do this because it's the right thing to do." But it has to be out there because that's the whole point, isn't it? To to, to raise money and actually to be to be something that one of people give money to. It has to be a bit unique, and people have to know about it. Like if somebody runs a London marathon thousands of people run it every single year so i'm not sure how many people then go i feel that obliged or compelled to give money to that but you're doing something which is completely new but if nobody knows about it it's not about you guys showing off because people have to know about it to give money to the hospice because if you don't shout about it then nobody donates and the hospice don't benefit from it because you guys yeah. have encouraged yourself and, and other members along the way for four pound fifty like because that's Nobody, nobody else knows to know to contribute. So I think it's really important that if you're going to do these charity yeah. events, you you have the kind of confidence to put it out into in the big wide world and say, "This is me. This is what I'm doing." And it should be like people go, "They're never going to do that," because that's what makes people want to come and commit to it and go, "Yeah, we're going to get on board with that." And and if you do it, it's worth every penny that we're giving you. Yeah. yeah. I think I think that's the good thing is that everybody that comes here, like when we've told them the distances that we need to keep hitting on the ski erg, the ski the road, the bike and the treadmill for every 30 minutes when we've got a distance that we need to hit. Like people, you see people's minds going, it's like, geez, you've got to do 6K on railway every 30 minutes and 6K on ski every 30 minutes and then so many kilometres on bike and you've got to keep doing that for th every 30 minutes for 24 hours going, Jesus. And everybody like, it's like, God, oh my God, we'll come in. We'll come in and help you because obviously we're going to fatigue. We are going to, yeah. as the 24 hours go, we are not going to be hitting the concert so people want to come in and help you which is brilliant I have to, I'm, if i'm going to come in for 30 minutes and train, i have to do a lot of training to get that, that my, my <laughs> five well you'll have to come in and do some extra wheels while they're doing it yeah yeah, yeah. i might have to, might have to be bro, to surely you could row for 30 minutes you what's that surely you could row for 30 minutes yeah but not yeah it's the distance that i cover that's the problem i could i can do over 30 minutes it just won't get very far 
Oh dear. Yeah, walk. Yeah, well, if that's what you yeah, think Elm, to... Elm picks off and he's somebody else coming who's faster than you. Quick, get off. <laughs> We've got 24 <laughs> hours. Not a week. Cool. Oh, no. So, anyway, um, that's pretty much it, it. So, if you have listened, please have a look, follow the links. We'll share the links and stuff like that and have a look into us event that we are doing. And if you're a local and you're anywhere near and you want to come in and do a 30 minute slot with us, get in touch and we can arrange. How you book onto your slot and how you pay, how you donate, and you come in and do it, and you can hey, join in. Even just come in and give us a bit of support, a different voice will be good, won't yeah. it? Yeah. Just a different voice, somebody to talk yeah, to. Yeah, even if you don't. Yeah, yeah we've got yeah. good old Lauren Lass who's been in this morning. She's um, she's a scholarship physio. She's coming in. She's going to give us some massages on Saturday morning. She's offered to do that, which is amazing. Um, so that's great. So any help, any help, the better. Yeah. Great. The other new development this week is we now have a Facebook page, don't we? So that for those people who are normally on uh, Spotify or on Apple or even YouTube, please head over to uh, Facebook, Yorkshire Fitness Podcast on as a Facebook page now. Yeah. So we'll make sure the links to, to the Just Giving site are on there as well. If you do want to get in contact, like Gray mentioned then, you're not sure how you can leave us a comment on, on the Facebook page as well. So yeah. Twitter... Um, Instagram and um, Facebook. We do, the only thing we're not on yet is TikTok. I think we're far too old for that, aren't we now? <laughs> yeah, way too old. Yeah, yeah. Really no. Yeah. yeah. I wonder what it's about, let alone add that out to it. So, yeah. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, we'll leave I'm that up. For anybody. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> that, that's definitely not his intro. <laughs> no. TikTok dance. Uh, no, definitely not. Right, nice one. All right, good to catch up, Elm. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for listening. Me. Thanks for listening. If you have tuned in, cheers, guys. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. See you next week. See you later. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you like the episode, we'd like you to share with us that on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. You can listen again on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Please leave us a rating and a review, and any comments would be more than appreciated. And hopefully, you'll tune back next time for our next episode. The Yorkshire Fitness Podcast.